Hello and welcome to the latest edition of 32 Jackpot Marketing Secrets from History's Greatest and Craziest Persuaders with David Lowenthal. Uh, I am David Lowenthal and today we're going to be talking about whether or not you're killing sales and fundraising opportunities by fingering your uh, copy. And by fingering, uh, I mean are you destroying your copy by thinking with your fingers uh, rather than your brain and rather than identifying uh, problems in your market. And we're going to be uh, learning this lesson by way of uh, the great presidential historian, um, Pulitzer Prize winning uh, historian, uh, Robert Caro, who uh, is probably the world's greatest expert on uh, President Lyndon Baines Johnson. Uh, he's won two Pulitzer Prizes. He's wrote a, he's written a massive, you know, multi-volume, I think like six or seven or eight or nine or ten or whatever, volume um, history of Lyndon Johnson. Uh, he also wrote a massive book on uh, Robert Moses, who um, was the uh, kind of infrastructure kingpin who dominated that uh, dominated that city and really all the money that came through infrastructure and highways and buildings and parks and all those kind of things for decades and amassed uh, probably the most powerful one of the most powerful people in the United States uh, wrote a huge book about that that uh, I believe won the Pulitzer Prize so really a very respected historian um, probably the most respected historian alive today um, most well known in, in elite circles and you know does very very well for himself um, but uh, he was not always a historian in fact uh, the beginning of his life uh, he wanted to be uh, a news reporter and this is where uh, this is where it's going to cut the copywriting uh, secret is going to come in uh, he wanted to be a news reporter um, and while in college, he would write essays. He was a very good writer, but he was a lazy writer. And, you know, like many of us, certainly myself included, in college would wait to write essays at the last moment. And um, so he would do this, and he would always get pretty good grades. But he never got, uh, he never really got a perfect score. And he eventually, you know, went to his uh, professor, and the professor said, yeah, you're a really good, really good writer, but the problem is you think with your fingers. You don't think with your mind. You're being lazy. Uh, you're being very lazy. And so um, uh, Robert Caro took this uh, took this to heart and decided he was not going to be lazy anymore. And he was going to do the work. He was going to do the research necessary uh, to write great papers and eventually uh, write be, uh, write great uh, news reporting. So cut to several years later or five years later, uh, he is a news reporter for a small New York. Uh, newspaper um, and he's uh, working uh, working the desk at some weekend there was no one at the office everyone was on some vacation or some like uh, work retreat and for whatever reason he was there kind of uh, holding down the fort uh, and a call comes in and it's from some employee at an airfield uh, on Long Island who says there's been a lot of corruption at this airfield with who, who got the contract but that a reporter would need to come down uh, to verify the information and actually come come down and find the actual documentation. Now, this was not his beat. This was not what he would uh, was typically reporting on. But uh, nevertheless, uh, he was there and he took the opportunity. So he went down uh, to the place, uh, went into the archives. No one was there apparently, and he just went through, went through, went through. Uh, probably hundreds, if not thousands, of documents. I believe up until the the sun up next day, he was there like basically the whole night and the whole morning uh, until he found something. And he found something, and he broke the case wide open, uh, and it became this huge scandal in in local uh, New York history. And so that was the first lesson of doing your research. And uh, he said his editor at the time told him, "Don't assume anything." Uh, turn every page, turn every goddamn page. And I think that's what that as a copywriter is what you need to do or as an entrepreneur. Don't assume anything in your market. F you will find the information you're looking for if you're looking in the right places, but don't assume. You need to actually know what your market is thinking, what they're doing, what they're saying, what their problems are, what their desires are. 
So never assume anything. So that's lesson one. Later on in life, when he decided to become a historian and pro, uh, profile uh, Robert, no Ro Robert Moses, um, who I was talking about earlier, um, he w uh, the Moses fellow was uh, retired from politics and government service, but was very, very secretive, and nobody would talk to any, nobody would uh, who wanted to interview him would be able to talk to him. He would turn him away, and kind of threaten, you know, basically anybody who was close to Moses with talking with them as well. He basic and he told Moses the same thing. Not only will I not talk to you, nobody I know is going to talk to you if they ever want a government contract again in this city. So he set to work uh he he set to work trying to get Moses to talk to him. He knew friends and family they were out. So what he did is he drew a Venn diagram and put friends and family on the outermost uh ends of those circles because he knew th those were a lost cause. But as he got in closer, he would think of names that probably Moses wouldn't remember, who would talk to him. And he eventually uh, got on, uh, talked to enough people to where Moses was freaked out by it and actually agreed for the first time ever in his life to talk to a reporter he didn't want to talk to. Uh, and not only talked to him once, but talked to him uh, seven times uh, to the with very long conversations talking about kind of his his life and legacy and career. So that's just another great example of persistence. Uh, that Venn diagram uh, is a is an excellent example of uh, creating a system to really get to your goal. So you know that you know X Y or Z is ruled out, but what about A B and C? So uh, you do the same with uh, with your own with your own products with your own services. You know. Where, what are you limited by? Uh, you, if you can't use those, what can you use? Um, maybe you can't talk to the founder because he's dead or something, if he's the inventor of your, the product that you're selling. But maybe you can talk to his top lieutenant who's still around and who knows a lot about it. You know, uh, Be resourceful. That is the uh, lesson of this video. Be resourceful. Um, and always do the research necessary and don't finger your copy. <laughs> don't finger your copy, which means do not skimp on the research. So thank you very much for listening to uh, today's video. Uh, if you like this video and want to hear more uh, daily tips, tricks, um, principles and secrets from direct response marketing from a libertarian uh, free market pro-liberty point of view, uh, if you're a libertarian business owner uh, or, or run, a, uh, run the marketing for a libertarian nonprofit, uh, I urge you to sign up for my daily newsletter, The David Lowenthal Report, which you can find uh, a link to that in the description. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.